Today I am going to explain a film called Queen of Hearts. Anna is a successful lawyer, a devoted wife and a caring mother of two twin girls. On her way to work, she meets up with a client who has survived a tragedy. The girl's normal evening ends with a stranger taking her by force. Anna is ready to defend her client in court and asks her to be straightforward, to testify against the perpetrator so that he ends up behind bars. In the evening the girl visits her lawyer and says that she has no strength to appear in court. Anna reassures her client and insists that she is not afraid of anything. After the hearing the stranger, who has mocked the girl, is released. At the same time Peter's son from his first marriage, Gustav, arrives. The boy has been misbehaving and as a result he is expelled from school. The boy's mother gets tired of raising him and sends him back to his father. He now has two choices, to live in Denmark with his father's new family or to go to boarding school. His wife insists that the boy stay with them as he has done nothing wrong and deserves to be happy. After getting to know their older brother, the girls give him drawings and trinkets they have made with their own hands. Returning from manicure, Anna notices that the boy did not appreciate the girl's efforts and throws away the toy. After picking up the keychain, she put it in her bag. A couple of days later Anna and the girls return from a horse riding trip and hear Peter and Gustav arguing. The boy wants to live separately, but he is a minor and needs the care of a parent. The woman supports her husband and asks him to be kinder to his son. The next morning Anna comes home from work to find that their house has been burgled. After informing her husband, she calls the police and makes a list of the stolen items. In the evening, the woman loads the clothes into the wash and finds a keychain made by the twins in Gustav's jeans. The next morning she decides to talk to the boy, as she realizes that the key ring was in her bag. Gustav won't admit to the robbery, but the experienced lawyer is not fooled. The woman offers him three choices, confess to his father and go to a boarding house, go to jail or try to adapt to a life together. Gustav chooses the third option and tries to normalize his relationship with his stepmother and younger sisters. During a picnic by the lake he plays with the girls and interviews them impromptu. In the evening the boy brings a girl, Amanda, to the house and tells her that their date has been delayed, so she will stay with them. Anna is doing her work, but suddenly moans and screams start coming from the teenager's bedroom. Aroused, the woman goes into the bedroom, removes her clothes and admires her body while looking at herself in the mirror. After another day at work, she tries to show interest in her husband, but he doesn't care about his wife, as he is preparing for an important business trip. Out on a picnic at the lake, the family has a good time. Accepting Gustav's offer, the woman goes for a swim and fools around with her boyfriend, splashing water on each other. In the evening they put the girls to bed and have a nice chat in the kitchen. Anna draws attention to the guy's tattoos and he offers to give her a small tattoo on her arm. At first, the woman declines the crazy idea, but later agrees to the little tattoo. A couple of days later, Anna and Peter are hosting guests. Soon she gets bored with their company and decides to listen to music and drink a lot of alcohol. After leaving the party, Anna meets a boy who has decided to go to a local bar. Keeping the teenager company, she becomes increasingly close to him. At some point, Gustav has to leave and her stepmother kisses him goodbye on the lips. When she returns home she scolds her husband for having had to entertain the guests alone, and it was rude of her to do so. The next morning the family decides to play hide and seek. Coincidentally, Anna and Gustav are hiding in the same place. The boy touches her arm and the woman feels aroused. In the evening she can't sleep at all and goes to the teenager's bedroom. With her hand under the covers, Anna caresses him with her hand and lips, after which the couple have love. The next day the woman goes to the shop and buys the teenager an expensive laptop. Peter disapproves of such lavish gifts, but Anna convinces him that the purchase is worthwhile. In the evening, the couple return from a party and decide to have some fun. Secluded in the bedroom, they engage in lovemaking. In the process, the woman slaps her husband several times, as if resisting him and trying to push her lover away. A couple of days later, Anna secludes herself and her boyfriend again to engage in lovemaking in the bathroom. The husband returns home early and the woman miraculously manages not to get into an awkward situation. The horny couple then run off into the woods and finish what they started. After another love, Gustav interviews the woman, asking childish and sometimes ridiculous questions. Fanny and Frida are celebrating a birthday. Lena, Anna's sister, decides to give the twins water pistols. The woman goes off to fetch water and the teenager chases after her to do the ding-dong thing. Lena sees her sister kissing her husband's son and leaves the party in a hurry, voicing her displeasure at Anna's behavior. Afraid of losing her family, the woman pushes the guy away and begins to ignore him. Maddened by his mistress behavior, the teen climbs a tree and spoils the party with childish antics. Falling to the ground, he pretends to break his spine, but it soon becomes clear that this is an evil joke by the teenager. The next morning Anna tries to talk to the boy and explain that it is over between them. Gustav takes the breakup painfully and wants to tell his father everything. Trying to make things right with his son, Peter decides to go away with him for a few days to a cabin in the woods in Sweden. While her husband and Gustav are away, the woman tries to reconcile with her sister. 
When she comes to visit Lena, she lets her daughters play with her son and tries to talk by explaining her actions. Her sister won't listen to anything and doesn't believe the relationship with the teenager is over. Unwilling to see Anna, she demands that she leave immediately. Having sent Frida and Fanny off on a horseback ride, the woman continues to get on her nerves and worries about what the boy will say about their intimate relationship. Calling Peter and leaving voicemails, she wants to talk to him. On the way home, a phone call rings and Anna is involved in a car accident while trying to find the phone in her bag. When she returns home, she sees her husband and Gustav, realizing that their weekend is over. Peter's behavior seems suspicious and Anna waits anxiously to talk to him. After putting the girls to bed, her husband asks her not to go anywhere, for they are about to have a serious talk. Anna soon realizes that her fear was not in vain. At the cabin in the woods, Gustav has developed feelings for his father and confesses everything. Having activated a defensive reaction, the woman says that it is all a lie created by the sick imagination of the teenager. She does not intend to tolerate this kind of treatment and is ready to file for divorce. Packing her things, Anna wants to leave for a few days and asks to vacate the house until her return. Faced with his wife's emotional reaction, Peter begins to believe her and calms her down. Having reconciled, the couple decide to send the boy to a boarding school. The next morning Anna sneaks into the boy's room and listens to the interview tapes. Hearing her own voice, she steals the audio tape, destroying the evidence that exposes the cheating. A little later the couple tries to talk to Gustav. The boy is greatly offended by his father's distrust, for he is telling the truth. Anna continues to act innocent, which only angers the betrayed teenager. Unwilling to speak in this tone, Gustav spits in the woman's face and leaves. Soon the father collects his son's belongings and takes him to a boarding house. The girls painfully accept their brother's departure and hope to be able to visit him soon. Continuing to help people, Anna takes on a new client. Sarah, an underage girl who is being abused by her alcoholic father, becomes her client. Trying to save the girl, the lawyer gives the case a go. Some time later, Sarah comes to the woman's house and thanks her for her work. The father is sent to compulsory treatment and until he recovers, the girl lives with her foster parents. They turn out to be very kind and caring, so she is happy. Arriving at work, Anna meets Gustav. He demands that she confess everything to her husband or else he will report her to the police. Their intimacy was illegal and as an experienced lawyer Anna has to understand this. Using her knowledge, she realizes that the guy has no proof and is not afraid of his words, because no one will believe them. Anna offers to forget everything that happened between them. Gustav cannot cope with his emotions and he is too hurt that his father does not believe his words. At night he breaks into the house, but the woman pushes him away and makes him leave. A few days later, Anna is celebrating her birthday. Lena has come to visit her sister and is ready to forget everything that has happened before. At the end of the evening, Peter reports that his ex-wife Rebecca has called him and told him about his son's disappearance. A few months later, Peter receives a call from the police and is summoned to Sweden. When he returns, he tells them that the boy's body was found in the woods near their cabin in the woods. It turns out that he had been there for several months and was found by a hunter as soon as the snow had melted. An autopsy will show whether it was an accident or whether Gustav took his own life. Locked in the bathroom, Anna weeps bitterly and sees the teenager in a mirror reflection. A little later she tries to talk to her husband, but he won't listen. The next morning, the family puts on their morning clothes, gets in the car and goes to Gustav's funeral. Please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.